Yo, what's going on, family and friends? I know it's been a while. It's your boy, Jay. Ready to give the word right now. Kind of excited. God put a word on my heart. I hope you receive it in Jesus' name. Hope you receive it with joy and grace and peace and love. And I want to say this. I hear this a lot. Practice what you preach. Not necessarily towards me, but in general. I want to encourage you, if you are a person that says that, I want to say this, that Every preacher, yes, we must practice what we preach, amen? But at the same time, the preacher, a lot of the times, is preaching that word not only for the congregation, but a lot of the times it's because he needs to hear it himself while at the same time practicing what you preach, of course, amen? But at the same time, a lot of the times, this is just as much for me as it is for you, amen? So I'm right there with you and... We're in this thing together, amen? So I see this thing a lot on social media and just in, in life in general that I've been coming across and it's the term self-love, self right? So self-love, I mean, it sounds good, you know, love yourself and all that and the self-help doctrine and while those things sound good and, you know, it is important to love yourself. It talks about that in the Bible. I want to get down to the root of that topic and the deceit in that topic from a point that is not biblical. Amen. So if you're a believer, you know what I'm talking about, or maybe you don't. And hopefully the Lord will uh, give you a fresh perspective on this in Jesus name. But at the same time, this is also for, for people that aren't believers. Hopefully, there will be breakthrough when you hear this because uh, I want to take you to the book of Isaiah chapter 14. And if you aren't a believer, if you're not a believer, I encourage you to, to do your studies and, and look up uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls and historic facts that even show and prove the book of Isaiah to be accurate. The same book of Isaiah that we have in this Bible right here is historic fact and was found in a cave in 1947 and it was the same exact same exact verses same exact word as the same isaiah we have in this bible so that's just one little piece of so many different more things that we have proof that this word of god is accurate in jesus name amen so isaiah chapter 14 so isaiah is a prophet of God, of Yahweh, amen, and what he's talking about right here, he's prophesying about an earlier time before even Adam and Eve, amen, and it's interesting because Genesis is way before Isaiah, Adam and Eve was talked about in Genesis, right, in Genesis, Isaiah was written way after Genesis, but yet Isaiah is getting a revelation from God himself to prophesy about an earlier time even than Adam and Eve. And it talks about and gives us a, a glimpse of what was happening in heaven before Adam and Eve were even created. Amen. So what it's talking about is uh, Lucifer. And most of you know who Lucifer is, you know, before he be, his name was Satan, he was Lucifer. Lucifer means son of the morning or day star. Uh, so let's see what the word of God has to say. It says, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of God I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north I will ascend above the heights of the clouds I will be like the most high yet you shall be brought down to Sheol Sheol means the grave to the lowest depths of the pit those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? Now 
the prophet Isaiah went back into context of who he was talking about in the earthly. But before he got to that point, he got he was talking about Lucifer in heaven and how Lucifer fell from heaven. And look at what it says. It says how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Why? Because he said in his heart that he will, he will, he will, he will. Look at, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. I will also sit on, on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Lucifer was all about I, 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 I. And that's where we mess up, brothers and sisters, friends and family. We mess up when we get caught up in I. I, I, I. Jesus said, those who humble themselves will be exalted, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Look what happened to Lucifer. He got thrown out. He got cast out. And it's better to be outcast than to be cast out later. Now, everyone's saying self-love and and I love myself. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. When you get caught up in I, 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 be careful. Because I is very, very dangerous. It really is. As crazy as that may sound to, there's people probably listening. You got, might be listening to this right now. And it might be hard to understand. But let me tell you something. Lucifer was focused on ascending. He said, I will be like the most high. He wanted to be God. And it's so interesting and powerful, right? Because the one he wanted to be like, the one he was trying to ascend to, that one descended. Whew, amen. The one he wanted to be like, the one he wanted to ascend to, that one Jesus Christ himself descended. He came to this earth. The word of God says in John 1 verse 14, he says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He became flesh and dwelt among us. God himself, the word, that's proof right there that Jesus Christ is God incarnate, God in the flesh. The word, I didn't say it, the word did. God's word did. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. God himself descended that we might ascend. But the one who was so focused on ascending, he got cast out because he was focused on all the wrong things. And it's not until you have the mindset of a humble heart and descending and not so focused on ascending, that's when you're truly going to ascend. That's when you're truly going to be exalted, when you take the time to descend, when you take the time to meet people where they are. Jesus is God in the flesh, but yet he came to dwell among sinners. He died while we were yet sinners. He, he, he died on the cross for people that may never believe in him. He died for the whole world. God, who has every right to exalt himself, doesn't yet he descends and humbles himself, born in a manger, dirty, dirty place, put on this filthy flesh, just so we can become the righteousness of God in Christ. It says that he who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus took on your sin that he might give you his righteousness. There was an exchange at the cross. Amen. I encourage you, Jesus Christ himself, God himself, descended. Who is it in your life that you need to meet at their level? Even if it's a child, even if it, you're a parent and you're, you're, you're parenting your kid, when you talk to your kid, don't talk to him standing over him. But some, you, even, even getting down to their level and talking to them at eye height, you're descending. You're meeting them where they're at. And even that in itself brings a comfort and a peace. Even that in itself, when you're sharing things from your testimony that some people don't know, but that person might need to hear it. And when you take the time to make yourself available and descend 
instead of trying to exalt yourself all the time and and ascend like Lucifer. Look what happened to Lucifer. He tried to ascend and be like God and he got cast out. And the one he was trying to be like was like, you're trying to ascend and I'm going to descend. So then eventually I'll, I'll ascend after the resurrection. But the whole point is, is that when you take the time to come and help others and love others, put the interests of others above yourself, that's when you're truly loving yourself. Not self-love, not this social media trend that so many people get caught up in and it's all about you, 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 I, I, I. No. Jesus said, yes, in the word it says, love your neighbor as yourself. So in order to truly, genuinely love someone, your neighbor, you should love yourself, of course, first, right? But Jesus takes it to a whole nother level. He gives progressive revelation in the book of John. He says, love others as I have loved you. Wow, amen. How did Jesus love us? Jesus loved us unconditionally. Now, so you're, so you're telling me, Jordan, that I have to love people unconditionally? That's what the word of God says. And I know it's impossible, it feels, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and relying on the Holy Spirit, relying on God, he gives us the strength and the power to love as he has loved because we have him within us. So we can love others as he has loved us. And if he wants us to love others as he has loved us, how much more does he want you to love yourself as he has loved you and not on your own understanding of love, your self-love? No, it's agape. It's God's love, not your own understanding of love, but the truth of love. The reason why Jesus said that is because he knew, because he's all knowing that we're going to be in a day and age where you're going to have people saying, Oh, I love like this, or this is my opinion of love and self-love and all these different opinions and understanding instead of going with the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's why he wanted to make it very clear because he knew that there are going to be people that try to, well, I'm going to love the way I think love it. No, Jesus, God himself said, no, I want you to love the way I love because we're not perfect and we're in this sinful flesh and our own understanding of love and the things that we've been dealt and been through in our life, we can be twisted in what we think love is. And that's not even what it is. It's not healthy. It's not the truth. This is the truth. Now you might be watching and say, that's your opinion, Jordan. You can say that, but I promise you it's facts. I promise you it's facts. Historic, biblical, archaeological facts. You can't argue against God's word and you can't stand against it. Come in alignment with his will. Look at look what Lucifer said. He said, look at the devil himself. And even if you're not a believer, you you know that you believe there's a devil. You believe there's a devil. Everyone does. Most people do, unless you're atheist. But and if you're atheist, you really have a lot of faith because it takes more faith to not believe than it than it does to believe. Because how can you look around and see this general revelation of God and still not believe. And if anyone has any questions or wants to have a conversation about that, hit me up, please. And we can fellowship and talk about this. But look at what Lucifer, look at the devil. He said, I will, I will, I will. In Jesus name, come against that spirit of yourself, selfishness and self-righteousness and your will, because not about your will, my will is about his will and we must come into alignment with his will speaking to me too the lord speaking to me too in jesus name in jesus name i just want to encourage you guys with this man because this is the truth this is the word of god this is this is a word that god gave me and i believe he's giving it to someone right now too i, I believe that someone needs to hear this someone needs to hear this word and if you're not a believer just meditate on this man you know what's crazy god gave me this word god gave me this word when i was in, pr in prison everyone wants to spend time with god if you ask no, no no hold on if you ask people if they want to go to heaven when they die most people will say yeah most people will want to go to heaven most people will say 
Well, I hope I go to heaven when I die. But I don't know. I've been doing this, this, and that. Okay, that's besides the point. The whole point is most people, if you ask them, where do you want to go when they die? They're going to say, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to paradise. Of course, amen. But isn't it interesting that most people want to spend eternity with God? But no, not no one, but a lot of people don't want to spend time with them right now. A lot of people don't want to spend time with God right now. And that's what it comes down to. Develop your relationship with the Lord right now. He's calling on you. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He who lets me in, I'll come in and dine with him. Amen. The gospel of grace. God, God, Jesus Christ descended. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Descended that we will have eternal life that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. And I encourage you guys, I encourage you guys, just taste and see that the Lord is good. And if you're a believer, praise God, keep pushing, keep going to church, keep getting get involved in a small group Bible study. Tune into these videos. Uh, fellowship, fellowship with the brethren, get, get in the word, uh, pray, stay prayed up, worship worship watch watch uh watch some worship uh worship channel uh sing to the lord you know amen so all these things they're they're so important they're so important and just think about that satan got caught up in i i i self 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 jesus said self-help is no help at all self-sacrifice that's the way Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice. That's the way. That's the way. That's the way. Taste it. Try it. See it. And see the truth from the lie. See, see the deceit from the enemy. Don't be a trim follower. Don't be a follower of things that are meaningless and, and wicked. And even if they sound right, a lot of you got to be careful because that's how the enemy is. He comes as an angel of light to deceive you. And it sounds good and it sounds self, even a lot of self-help, we can even go into that. I don't want to go too much into it, but but it's so true. Be careful on what you're listening to. Be careful on what you're listening to. And everything I'm telling you, look it up. You don't have to believe anything I'm telling you. All you got to do is just go look it up in the Word and ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. But... There's people that God gives gifts to, just like Stephen when he was walking and he seen the, the, the Ethiopian and he, the Ethiopian was reading the word, but he didn't understand what he was reading. And Stephen asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And the Ethiopian said, how can I unless someone teaches me? So right there, the word God has shown us that there's times where the Holy Spirit might just give you a fresh perspective and a, and a fresh revelation. And you need to check if that is really from the Holy Spirit, not just you coming up with an answer on your own understanding. Amen. And also, but there's a time to where God has given certain brothers and sisters gifts in the body of Christ to be preachers, teachers. Uh, many things, evangel there's evangelizing, there's prophets, the gift of prophecy. There's the first Corinthians chapter 12 talks about all the gifts. And so these gifts were, are given because God loves to give his children gifts, the gift of eternal life and then gifts in the spirit. And we have the fruit of the spirit, but the gifts are, God loves to use his children to, to expand the kingdom of God. Even though he don't need us, that's the beautiful thing about God. He wants us, he loves us, he wants to use us. He, he wants to, to flow through us. And, and he, and you have those, you have those same things in you within you all you got to do is allow it to be drawn out of you in the word in proverbs it says the counsels of the heart of man are like deep waters and a man of understanding draws it out but that's even too with your abilities your gifts and who are you surrounding yourself with are you getting with uh people that are going to build you up and encourage you and draw that gift out of you that you don't even know that you have because the word says that we all play a vessel in the body of christ 
and maybe you're not in the body of Christ yet, but I believe and declare the sound of my voice. There's someone watching right now that ain't a believer, and you're going to come to repentance in Jesus' name. God's going to bring you to your knees, and he's going to develop that gift out of you, whoever you are. All you got to do is make yourself available and call out on the name of Jesus, because that's what the word says. Call on the name of the Lord. Those who call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. They will be saved. That's a promise. Believe that. I hope you do. And I love you guys. I love you guys. I'm just, ah, I feel, I feel the spirit. I feel the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm just, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I just feel the spirit just telling me to keep going. Just whoever you are. And if you're a believer in Christ, stay the course, stay the race. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on Christ, especially right now in this time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. That's what the word says. And it also says that your salvation is much nearer than it was when you first believed. Amen. Jesus, the day that Jesus comes, it's only getting closer and closer. So what does that tell you if you're a believer? Stay rooted. Stay anchored. Stay in that word. Prayed up. Stay in the fellowship of the brethren. Amen. If you're not a believer, I challenge you to ask God. Ask him. Ask him. He will come through. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the author and finisher. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Please receive that and any questions please hit me up hit me up i'm here with open arms just like jesus man that's what jesus he came he's like this jesus like that he had his arms open why because that's how much he loves you like that he loves you like this that much that's how much god loves you he's saying matthew chapter 11 verse 28 come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden for i will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So come to him and taste and see that he is good. And you'll never be the same as you came in Jesus' name. I used to love saying that. I'll never be the same as I came in Jesus' name. Because the people that are watching, you know me. If you're from my past, you remember me. You know how I used to be. Turn, turned up, party animal, the whole nine yards. I'm, mm -mm. Nope, it's over. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen, and that is the same scripture that the Lord wants you to declare over your life. To leave the things that 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 are are of the past, leave them there. Only talk about them for a testimony and to glorify God. Because other than that, it's rubbish. Paul said. All these things that I used to be, he gives a whole thing on all the credentials he used to have. And yet he says, all these things I count as rubbish compared to who I am in Christ now. And, and, and the knowing who I am in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the resurrection. Who he is in Jesus now doesn't even, that right there doesn't have no comparison in who you are in Christ. Because who you are now is who you were always meant to be in Jesus Christ. Amen. God loves you. Be encouraged and be blessed. Love you guys. God bless, man. And my bad, it's been a little while. I've been uh, I've been kind of just spending time, having my own time with the Lord, the consecration one-on-one -on -one time. But I feel rejuvenated in the spirit. And God has another word that he's put on my heart to share with you. The next few days and i'm gonna just give you a sample real quick context gives birth place to passion context gives birth place to passion okay and i'll be sharing on that uh probably tomorrow but uh yeah amen i hope hope you guys will be tuning in and remember be a product of grace what is grace god's undeserved unmerited favor product of grace Continue, if you are a product of grace, because you're saved, continue to walk in that. Continue to be a product of undeserved, unmerited favor. The fact is that 
God loves you so much. You didn't deserve salvation because we're born in sinful flesh, but yet God loves you so much he still gave it to you anyway. That's what grace is. Grace is God's sovereign ability to get the job done on your behalf. Receive that and believe it and become. Believe, receive, and become. Amen. I love you guys. God bless in Jesus' name.